to the Bringing Intimacy Back show. Well, today, what we're talking about is a really important topic that all of us, most of us, have gone through. It's the dating role. Dating and building real connections. Because really, and especially in today's world, dating has changed. And about 59% of the U.S. agree that online dating, which is what a lot of people do these days, is a good way to meet people. So today, I have a special guest here who's been on our show before, who is also a sexual, uh, sex therapist, a mental health counselor, Paola Rodriguez. Yes, Thank welcome you. here. Thank you, Dr. Brown. It's good to be here once again. Yes, and let me give you a little bit about her background. She has her master's in mental health counseling from NOVA, a bachelor's in psychology from FIU. She's done a lot of the Gottman Method Couples Level 1 training. She's also done sex therapy through Modern Institute of Sex Therapy. And she's a qualified supervisor, and she has a practice here in South Florida called Life Discovery Psychotherapy. Yes, yes. So I know um, I know you a little bit, but can you just tell us a little bit about your journey and becoming a counselor and working on um, sex therapy for individuals and for couples? Sure, Dr. Brown. So I always blame curiosity for, right. for starting my journey. You know, I, I've done psychotherapy for a very long time, but the sex therapy and the couples work, I really got interested in it. Uh, one of my mentors, he said, Paula, can you take some sex therapy cases? And I was a little bit ambivalent in the beginning because I was just kind of learning about this stuff. And when I started learning, it was kind of like Christmas. I'm opening this mm -hmm. box and there's so many different things that I'm learning about the client and the couple. Sexuality really has a lot to do with everything. Of course, yes. And I think people don't realize that. No. Yeah, definitely. And so um, today's topic is dealing with dating. Mm -hmm. How do you define it? So for me, dating is an intentional investment or commitment. It's a step to something else. However, one thing that I think is really important that every each one of you define mm -hmm. what dating means. Okay. You know, you mentioned online dating earlier. Right. That's wrong. People get caught up with this idea, you know, okay, I turn off my app, that means he also turned off his app. And that's not necessarily the that's case. That's true, that's what, true, yes. Dating goes along with commitment. So I think it's really important to define it mm -hmm. and make sure that we're on the same page. Yeah, and you mentioned that it's intentional. Yes, intentional. intentional yes, yes. Why, why do you have that word in the definition? Because you're making a point to start connecting with that person right. in an intimate way, in an emotional way. You're taking time out of your day, which you know now time is very precious. Right, of course. Right, and making an investment to see can this go elsewhere. So the word intentional really resonates with me. Right, right. Yeah, and we're talking about building connections and how would you, and this shows about intimacy. Mm -hmm. How do you define intimacy? So intimacy for me, you know, the first word that comes to mind is closeness, mm -hmm. right? Yes. It's connection. It is uh, building a space between you and this person where you feel completely free to be yourself without right. judgments, without shame, you know, and that only you and that person know about this this little space. It's a very sacred space when I think about intimacy. Yeah, definitely. and. Um, it's so hard sometimes to find that connection. Yes, and in today's world, dating is so much different. How do you, have you seen it change over the years? Well, I think we've basically slapped imagination in the face, right? Okay, and right. curiosity, because now what do we do? Instead of maybe exchanging numbers, we exchange Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Now I know where you traveled, who right. you are, who your friends look like. So I think, you know, we've taken away this idea of curiosity, which fuels desire. Right, and the other part is that I feel that it's become almost like a transaction. Mm, right, yes. this didn't work. I'm just gonna, gonna swipe do right, and I'm just gonna keep on going to the next one. Right. So I really like to think of it, you know, more of a process versus just an event. Right. That's the main. You know, and you're right. It does take away the curiosity because back in the day, you didn't really know so much, so much about that person when you went on a first date, and now you have all this information that you see online. Right, you were lucky if you had I, a little beeper. That yes, was yes. One, four, three, which when I saw <laughs> yeah. it, you know. So yes. Times have changed. Yeah, it's because sometimes changed. you have this preconceived notion of what a person is. Yes. Because of what you've seen mm -hmm. online. Abs absolutely. 100%. Yes. 100%. Yeah. And then when you meet in person, right, you don't have that much to talk about. I right. Mean, you may, but at the same time, it's kind of grabbing from what I already know versus hearing the story. I'm in love with stories. Mm -hmm. Stories, I think it's where that juice, where that desire really starts to flow. Right, right, definitely. So even just thinking about that, should you really research someone before you go on a date? I advise not. You I advise, advise not. not. Okay. You know, 
or at least, I mean, if you're getting to know each other, because this apps often, you see the profile, like, you right, see right, okay, That's but then, you know, not going any further, and just okay. really feeling what this feels like, I have a lot of people that send lengthy emails, it seems like they know each other, but they haven't even met yet, mm. you don't know what this right, feels right. like, you know, so I think it's really important to wait for this. Wait for that, yeah, so yeah. And have you seen that men and women, it's a different, do they have the same struggles when it comes to dating? Well, I think, you know, we share certain struggles. You know, when I think about dating, I always go back to the shoulds. You know, family tells us who we should be dating. Oh, yes. And it's either modeled right. in a negative way, in a positive way, or not modeled at all. Okay. Society tells us what dating and relationships should look like. Right. And then the media has this portrayal that's a non-realistic expectation of happiness when it comes to relationship and we tend to compare ourselves to that yes and if we don't meet that then we fall short men i think you know they're really kind of trying to redefine their role right. i think men we still want them to initiate we still want mm -hmm. them to be assertive but then at the same time women are going thriving in this idea of independence so men are really understanding okay how do i go about this and for women one of our strengths is that we're analytical. Yes. But when we overuse that strength, we tend to overanalyze certain mm. situations and find meaning when there is none. I create assumptions based on my judgment. Right. And so I think it's important to kind of keep an open mind when it comes right. to that. Right, definitely. Well, thank you so much for providing that information. And we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to go more into the details of dating and building connections. to the Bringing It Intimacy show. Today we are talking about dating, something that all of us or many of us have had experience doing. And today we have another counselor here who is here in South Florida and we're talking about it. And in our last segment, she was talking about how men and women differ in dating. And as we've been talking a little bit um, about this digital age and we talked a little bit about assumptions. Um, what do you think creates all these assumptions about what dating is and what it isn't? Well, I think, you know, we go back to the shoulds, right, what right. we learn. But I think also, you know, when it comes to assumptions, often I feel that people tend to model the expectation that they want, hoping that the other person gets it somehow. Okay. Right? And without verbally communicating? Without verbally, without putting a narrative to that behavior. Yes. Absolutely. Without verbally communicating. And then we don't see that come back to you. you right. Know, and I hear people say, but I did everything for him or her. And she didn't do the same for me. Mm -hmm. But I said, but wait a minute, did you tell them that that's what you were doing? So I feel that we get caught up in this idea, oh, if I show it, then the person should, he should know, she, she should, should know, know, they right. should know. I hear so much when it comes to that. Right. So we build these silent expectations and assumptions in our mind, mm -hmm. and I think we get a lot of pressure. Definitely. You know, everything happening around us. Yeah, and you mentioned shits, and shits are not facts. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about that. Shits come from our culture, from our family, how we are, are raised and stuff. So shits are different for everyone, but they're not facts. No. And they're not truths that that's how life should be. And part of your journey and growing as an individual is challenging those shits. If you grew up in a very wealthy family and the message was always like, you should go out with someone who's as wealthy as you, but that's really not your value, right. you got to challenge that and grow away from that. Okay. How do you know when you're in a serious, committed relationship? Well, I think, you know, people go into serious, committed relationships and they say, yes, I want to be serious. And then all of a sudden they don't. Right. right. So I think the certainty is something that, you know, we always kind of question. But I think that there is a way to start talking about commitment mm -hmm. and family. And I value, these are my values. Right. And do you share my values? Um, and making sure that the person knows if the person runs away or ghosts you, that's a good sign. Right. That means that they don't want to be here to begin with. I know, but some women are afraid. Like, so oh my gosh, me time. if I, you know, if I tell him this, if I tell him this, if I tell him then he's going to run away. Yeah. And then right. they end up settling. Yes. And, and of course, that's how we deliver the message. Right. 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 Do you think that we fall in, in love or we try to stay in love or have this due to societal pressure that we have to? I know for many people that age of 30. Oh my God, yes. Yes, I don't know if they're running We're to your office. This yes. Cookie cutter approach, right? I meet you, we date, we move in together, we get married, we buy something, and we have kids. And right. because there is this pressure that this is how it should be, mm -hmm. if you're not following those steps, 
then it feels like you're doing something wrong. Create your oh. own container and really understand what works for Create you. Create your own container. Yes, awesome. and you know, so a question that I always ask women and men, what was happening six months before you entered this committed relationship or right. this marriage? And people may say, you know, all my girlfriends were getting married and I was feeling like I was 30. 30. We're yes. 30? <laughs> no, Come on, no. people. Yes. But, you, know, <laughs> you know, and I was getting all this pressure. You know, yes. so it's like we're pushed in this way. No, you got to stop and see what works for you. Listen, cookie cutter works great. Right. But not because we're getting the pressure from everything else and everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was just thinking as you were thinking that, that real, in reality, um, people should really live their life like someone's already there. You know, because sometimes people just like, okay, I'm waiting for a partner before I do this, before I do that, before I do that. Yeah. And that's around to that. I love that because if you live your life, you know, as if somebody else was already there, you're really focusing on you. you. You're not yes. waiting for that person to join you so that you could travel, so that you could, right. you know, change careers, so that you could think about family. You're right. really working on your own needs. Right, right. You're not becoming, you know, co codependent in a Absolutely. variety of stuff. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Um, another question so many people ask is, how do you negotiate monogamy, especially in the beginning when you, you know, is it the third date, the fifth date, the... Great question. Three Listen, months, I whatever. I think we have to start by defining monogamy. Oh, right? exactly. Because yes. as Esther Perel says, you know, she says, we don't, def we don't negotiate monogamy, but we thread at the idea of infidelity. Yes. Right? So, and, and same thing, talk from a value-driven place. Right. If you say, hey, you know... I think this is going well, and I notice that things, you know, what are your thoughts about mm -hmm. commitment? What are your thoughts about monogamy? Right. Because, again, we assume that the person is on my same page, and a and lot it of may times not they're be. not. Mm -hmm. So talk from a value-driven place. This is what I value. What do you value? Right, right. And think about intimate monog monogamy, emotional monogamy, physical monogamy. All the different know. aspects, and you're yes. not getting jealous over taxes or whatever yeah so right. that's virtual monogamy virtual, yeah, virtual yes monogamy, instagram facebook all know, the different messages. stuff we have a lot to deal with nowadays yes definitely so earlier we talked a little bit about marriage how soon in a relationship should people think about marriage in the traditional type sense because marriage can mean a variety of different a variety things. Of things listen i love <laughs> my girl beyonce but she's like if you like to put a ring on it i don't know do i want a ring do yes. i want a necklace is it time for a ring yes. you know, so i think again i think we get so much pressure about if he loves you or if he's committed to you then marriage comes next and a lot of times i hear the partner say well wait a minute paula i'm oh. invested and i'm and committed this. with them in this way we live together and we have joint accounts and that to me makes commitment so i think right. it's what really some people don't want to bring kids into the world unless they're married because they have that value of family. Mm -hmm. So really, like I said earlier, create your own journey and your own path. If marriage is something that you value, again, yeah. start, start talking, talking from about a value-driven place. Yes, well, thank you so much. And I love how you put create your own box. Yes, of how your dating world should be. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, well, we're going to take a short break. and we come back, we'll have some tips on how to make real more connections in your dating life. to the Bringing Intimacy show, where intimacy is real. And today we've been talking about dating, building more connections. And so um, as we've been talking about, and there's people out there and they want to connect more with people, can you tell us what a healthy dating relationship looks like and provide us with some tips on that? Sure, so I think when it comes to connection, I want you to think about what are the things that get in the way of connection between you and that person. Mm. A common thing that I hear is the phone, technology. Yes. Right? That's a big thing that, you know, doesn't allow us to connect. So, again, I think being present, how do we define mindfulness? Mindfulness right. is really being grounded and noticing the experience. Mm -hmm. So, I think, and think about what type of connection am I looking for? Right? And when you understand, first of all, it's really important to understand what you're seeking so that you can communicate and put it out there. Right and seek the connection that you want. Right, I definitely like the um, idea about putting it out there. I tell yeah. people to even do a list mm -hmm. so they know what they want and to keep it on their phone so they don't stray. Yeah, so, sometimes, one, so one little tip or one little yes. tool, you know, ideally, so write three things on a piece of paper, ideally tolerable, ideal tolerable and unacceptable, and start right. with the unacceptables. 
Think right. of the things that are not flexible for you. If you grew up in a substance abuse fam, in a substance mm-hmm. abuse household where parents were using, mm-hmm. maybe an unacceptable is going to be, I don't want anyone who's going through that. Not because we're judging, right. but because it's something that has so much pain for me that I know if I bring it here, it may not work. Right. right? It's this idea, of, and this is the Gottman work, where they talk about, you know, what are your core needs and what are your flexible areas? Mm-hmm. Because we want to be flexible. I'm all about Liz, but we also want to understand which ones would I be able to work They're with. flexible, yeah, yes. definitely. And since you mentioned um, the whole drinking aspect, I know from, in many of the apps they say, you know, what kind of drinker. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, oh, yes. yes. And I think you have to be really careful with that because sometimes people aren't honestly true. Right. And because, you know, it's, it's our own fear, right? right? We want to know everything about that person. So I know exactly what I'm getting into. So I don't... You know, so this person doesn't hurt me. That's impossible. Right. You're going to find some things out, and it's going to be a difficult choice, but it's a value-driven choice. Definitely. I also think you should also look at yourself and see what you're bringing to the table. Ah, I love that. Right. Yeah. What can I bring? What can I... What, yeah, what am I contributing to this whole relationship and Absolutely. dating aspect and that kind of stuff? So in your private practice, you um, offer workshops and stuff? Yeah, so I'm not, my next workshop is Love and Lust, and we're going to talk a little bit about both of this because I think love needs help. Love needs, you know, people are like, oh, love is going to save us. Yes. No. Love yes. needs to be good at communicating. Love needs trust. And then lust, you know, sometimes you just need that spark of desire, but sometimes that's the toughest part. People communicate well and they trust each other, but lust, you know, is the toughest part, and, it, and it's significant. So... I'm working on doing this workshop because it's a great way of educating. We're right. all about educating. Nobody tells us how to do, do relationships right yes. or yes. wrong. You know, so it's, it's a difficult place. Yeah, and so from that workshop, is it that you need actually both of those in a healthy relationship? Absolutely. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I've seen where couples have just, like you said, it's the cutty cutter in the sense of trying to get married and do all that. And but they don't go. have the passion. And then we just go. And, you know, there's been doctor about my practice. People you know, that are unhappy, and six months before, sex was never good. Mm-hmm. Like, they never had this chemistry, but they're like, oh, maybe when we get married, it'll get better. Right. Oh, maybe our first, after our first kid, then we'll start connecting. No, we right. got to be aware and not just do cookie cutter something that looks like this right. and fast. And, you know, no, you got to stop and think, wait a minute, how am I feeling checking in with yourself and the other? Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you think couples should um, go to counseling prior to getting married or... Yes, it's yes. a proactive approach. You know, it's like yes. when you go to the doctor to get your physical, make sure that you're doing everything that you need to do. Mental health is so important in that way. Entering into something, into uh, an empty, not an empty, not a promise, but without knowing really what comes next. So it's always good to be equipped. Why not? No, I know. You get Why to not? understand the, the other person. And, and sometimes in counseling, you get insight and you figure out if this person is for me or not for me. Yeah, and it could be really, I've seen people that, you know, come in for premarital counseling and it's a very intimate experience for them. Mm-hmm. They, they feel more connected. They feel a lot better going into this investment, this commitment of marriage. So it's also a very intimate connection uh, I've experienced. Yes, yeah, house. definitely. And it, I think it helps them in the sense of communication. Yes. Definitely. And curiosity. And curiosity. they turn around and are like, oh, I didn't know that about mm-hmm. you. You know, and they take this home and they connect further. Mm-hmm, definitely. And I love how even you started in the beginning that curiosity is so important in trying to get to know someone. Yes, and in, in a relationship. And mm-hmm. how do you keep the dating fresh? So, uh, spontaneity. 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 We get comfortable. We put on sweatpants, watch a movie. Yes. And we get comfortable. And listen, that's nice and dandy and it's fun. But just remember, desire, like Esther Bell says, is creating a bridge, right? Right. So, if I'm home all the time and it's predictable, you know, we tend to be on our phones more. Go out to a dinner. Go out to do something and leave your phones in the car. Mm-hmm. No phones allowed. Take a Definitely. camera if you want to have right. memories. But keeping the spontaneity going, and when it comes to sexuality, you know, wearing something new, yes. you know, trying a little BDSM in a very light way, whatever it may be, just keep that spontaneity going. You never know what the other person may like, and needs change over time. Right, right, and definitely, and even if you're in a committed relationship, that spontaneity helps. You can't just be doing the same thing no. over and over again. Yes. yes, yes, and dating is important, even in a marriage. Yes. Mm-hmm. Dating too, dating too, you know, because right. we, get, we start to get comfortable. Yeah. And so, no, let's, I'll initiate a date, you'll initiate a date, you know, kind of playing around with this. With right, this right. Challenge. 
Some other questions I get are, what are some romantic dates? Like, you know. So, you know, one exercise that I love that okay. I married couples do. So, I have one, you know, I have one partner say, okay, you're going to plan a date thinking everything about what the other person likes. And they're not allowed to talk about it at all. In oh. this session, when they get out, you can't talk, talk about, about it. it you're just going to go with, think back of what they like. And we start observing more. We start paying more attention. Yes, yes. Right away, the person's saying, oh, what do they like? And then they start looking. And then we do the opposite. Then the other That's, person, you know, and completely, and we leave little notes or we're really right, that right. creativity is really important. Right, and that makes that other person feel valued and, you know, hey, they thought about me as they planned this. Right, I yes. feel appreciated, I feel seen in my relationship, I feel present with you in this space, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yes, definitely. And we've talked a little bit, but not a lot about presence. Mm -hmm. And you say putting down the phone and stuff. It's really important, I think, when you're going on a date or when you're engaging with someone to be fully present. Yeah, you know, I was watching this uh, uh, this talk, Dan Savage and Esther Perel, and they talked about that often, you know, we go to sleep, and the first thing we do when we wake up after our alarm goes off, yes, we grab our phone. phone. Yes. And we are now connecting to the universe. And this person next to me is just another person that's also connected <laughs> to, to the, the whole yes. universe. Exactly. You know, and they suggested get an alarm clock. Leave right. your phones out in the kitchen so that when you wake up, you're actually looking at the other person and you're connecting with them instead of like the world. Yes, you know? so I definitely. It was really amazing, and it's you know I've, I've I've suggested it to a lot yeah. of my people already. Oh, good, awesome. So if our audience members are out there and they're hearing this and they want to get to know you or get to connect with you, what's the best way? So uh, my Instagram is Lab Discovery Psych, and I have a lot of educational material on yes, there. Yes, and she my does. My website, uh, lfdiscovery.com. So the Life Discovery Psych, you will find me whether it's on Instagram or my website as well. All right. Thank you so much for being on Thank this show. Thank you, Dr. Ron. It's always a pleasure. Yes. All right. This is the Bringing Intimacy Back show.